the first topic we'll cover is scale. I know that seems pretty straightforward. It's part of every single game ever. But um, I think we're going to see how the particular scale choices here in this game system factor in to the other subsystems and really kind of tie things together. First we'll look at the time scale. This system assigns 20 minutes to every single game turn. And that gives a sense of how many turns are going to be in a 24-hour day. But more importantly, it's really going to help define the amount of activity that can occur in any one game turn. There's 20 minutes, so we're going to model 20 minutes of activity in a turn. Now, just like every war game, La Batale is played on maps depicting the uh, terrain of a particular battle. They have hex grids superimposed, and every hex represents one unit of space. And in the Lavatal system, every hex represents 100 meters. Now that can vary for titles. If the designer feels they need to play with that a little bit, they can to fit their maps or whatever they think they need to do. But the system looks at every, every hex here as 100 meters. Now that we have scale for a time and space to find, we can consider another scale, and that would be unit scale. The first unit scale to consider is that of military organization. La Batalis is usually thought of as a battalion level scale, since most of the combat formations are infantry, and they're most gen generally represented by battalions. Some formations can be presented as regiments of infantry as well. And there are specialized units of in infantry, like these Schutzen, that can be represented at the company level. Cavalry is generally represented as regiments, but on a few occasions you might see a squadron. And artillery is almost always companies or, or half companies. But these kinds of military organizations aren't necessarily the best way to represent the size of the unit. The amount of men and material represented in a unit is going to actually vary independently of the military unit. So here we have three battalions yet they actually represent three different quantities of men. So this first number here on these counters represents the quantity of men for each of these units. For infantry, each of these increments represents 100 men. So there are 800 men here, 700 in that battalion, and 600 in that third battalion. All battalions, but different quantities of men. For cavalry, each strength point represents 50 horses and riders. And for artillery, each strength point represents approximately two to four guns. Now this information is used in conjunction with the map scale to determine how much men and material can occupy any one hex in the map. We represent that lit by a uh, placing one unit on top of another. This is called stacking, literally because of this mechanic for establishing it. One unit on top of another. But of course, this just represents this amount of men in the same space. They could be one battalion in front of the other, maybe side by side, depending on the quantity of men and material. Now, each title is going to set the stacking limits, the amount of men and material that can occupy one hex. But roughly you see numbers around the level of maybe 16 to 18 infantry strength points. Something similar for cavalry. Sometimes it's limited to a single regiment. And artillery occupying a lot more space. You can usually put maybe four to six increments in one space or along with our uh, along with infantry one infantry unit 
and this just regulates and also represents how these military units occupied the space that they were deployed in. Now, this map represents some perfectly clear open terrain, but other map features can have different effects on the amount of men that can occupy it. So these two units are in some village and some cultivated areas, and those could have different stacking limits from open and clear terrain. And of course the practical imp implications of this are you can't take a 120,000 man army and squash it all into one small space. They're going to end up occupying large areas of the map. And we'll kind of see how that plays out with the other systems as we go forward. Now we have time and space and units all defined, but we're not building dioramas. We want to see things happen. So we need to start making things occur in time and space. And there are really kind of two easy representations of that. The first is simply unit movement. So we have a unit, we have 100 meter blocks of space, we have 20 minutes of time. How far can that unit move in that space and time? Effectively every um, increment of movement represents 100 meters of space and different units will be allocated different amounts of movement according to how much of space they can cross in the 20 minutes of time. This is a typical infantry unit, line infantry from uh, the French. They've been assigned a 7 for their movement increments, meaning on clear terrain, on a nice sunny day, they can move 700 meters in one 20-minute turn. These Prussian Fusiliers can move 800 meters. And there could be a number of reasons for those differences. Individual designers and titles will determine that. But often it's training, um, branch of the service, a particular um, doctrine for the national armies, things like that will go into allocating these, uh, these quantities such as this infantry battalion. This is a provisional French battalion, meaning their amount of training, their preparedness, their experience is low, so their ability to maneuver as a combat unit is less than their more experienced counterparts. Cavalry tends to have higher movement. Horses are faster than men, but different kinds of cavalry can actually have different movements. This is light cavalry, so they have a much higher movement allowance. Heavy cavalry, armored cavalry, can have much lower. But in general, they're, they're almost always faster than infantry. Artillery usually hovers around the six range. Bigger, heavier guns can sometimes move as slow as four movement points. And horse-drawn artillery, heavy or light cavalry guns, tend to have much higher, maybe eight to 12 range. This is our first look at leader counters. We'll look at them much more later. But different leaders, this cavalry leader has a very high movement. Keep up with his troopers. This is an infantry leader, much lower. And actual movement is constrained by terrain. Clear terrain is easy to traverse. It's cultivated a little harder towns and villages more so. So the effect is that they take more of the movement points to enter and move through, so effectively slowing down the units. Another way to look at activity in time and space is the amount of combat that can occur in one 20-minute period. Now the rule sits do agree on this largely very subtle differences, but for the most part they agree that there are four ranged fire combats and two close-in combats per 20 minutes. So what this means practically is that each unit can either, well both, initiate a ranged fire combat and be the target of a ranged fire combat twice in a turn. So this French battalion could initiate a fire combat on 
the Prussians here. That's one. The Prussians could then respond and fire back. That's two. And the Prussians could initiate the combat, fire on the French. That's three. And the French would respond with four. Now, that's not representing the sequence of play because we're talking about activity in time and space. We'll talk about sequence of play later. As you can see, that's you know a fair amount of combat in a 20-minute turn. And we're not even done yet because we still have close-in combat to consider. Each side can be the, the initiator or the target of two close combats per turn, meaning the French could initiate a close combat against the Prussians, and then the Prussians in their opportunity could initiate another, a close combat in return. Assuming everybody survives all these combats long enough to engage in them. So we have time, space, unit size, and then motion and activity in that time and space. Well, what's the point of going over all this? Well, it certainly sets the fabric of the game system. It definitely sets the way many of the systems are going to interact. But I think what I like about it is it's going to set the balance of the systems with each other, especially this idea of the number of combats per turn. I can just trust the designers have done their work, their research, and that the historical aspect of this is true and reliable. And I don't have a problem with making that assumption. But one thing I can do as a player and a, an observer is just to see what happens with the game when I play and see if I can observe the kind of things occurring that historically are reported to have occurred. And that balance of movement and combat is pretty important. I think if we just do a few thought experiments, we were to cut in half the movement allowances to the units, obviously in the same 20 minutes we would see them move much less. But over the course of an entire battle, we would see far less movement across the entire spread of the map. And there's just something about that that we know wouldn't feel right. It should not take six hours to go you know, half a mile, even under combat conditions. And there's a similar uh, path that takes us down with combat operations. If we were to cut the number of fire combats in half, what we would see is really a more static battlefield. We would see you know, fewer losses, of course, but fewer side effects of the combat operations in general. So we would see maybe a greater fortitude amongst the combatants, less movement. I mean, combat should disrupt the lines. And if we do that at a much lower pace, we'll see much less of that occurring. And of course, this, the opposite is true as well. If we were to double up the number of combats from four to eight, well, I think we'd start to see far too much damage done on the armies in too short a period of time. And if we were to try to those experiments, we'd, we'd have to balance something out to make it keep the correct outcome that really we expect. If we cut the number of fire combats in half, well, we'd have to change the combat resolution chart to make sure that enough damage was exacted by those same combats. So I think what we're seeing is that the balance is there. We have to keep the balance, and if we find that the current system is giving it to us, we should be pretty happy with that. Now, I think we'll see that the amount of activity in the space and time we've, def we've defined here is going to have a really profound effect on the most fundamental system in the game, and that's the one we will be covering in our next presentation.